The Giro d'Italia always entertains us, and that was the case today with the 2024 edition Stage 11, starting in the region of Campania and heading over here to the East Coast in Abruzzo, just outside of Pescara, in the little seaside village called Franca Villa Al Mare, Franco Villa at the seaside. And here, after 207 kilometers of racing, a long, long stage, a stage that involved climbs at the beginning and a mostly flat run in to the finish in that final 3.4 kilometer straightaway, this direction into a headwind. We had stage winner, now double stage winner in the Giro d'Italia, big, tall Jonathan Milan wearing the purple cheek club Mino jersey coming through in the sprint, just powering ahead of Tim Mirlier. Well, you wouldn't see that if you're looking at the stage results. We'll get to that here in a minute as to why you're not seeing his name. But it's Jonathan Milan, the soft-spoken, tall Italian, who won again two stage wins. That involves the sprint teams and the sprinters in this year's race. Two by Milan, one by Olaf Koy, who's had to abandon this race, and another one by Tim Merlier. This year's edition involves several super sprinters and several sprint stages, and we should have one again, perhaps tomorrow, but for sure in two days time. But let's get down to the racing today because it wasn't without controversy. Already ahead of the stage start, unfortunately, Kian Ultabrooks, leader of the white jersey, young classification, also fighting for a podium in this year's Giro d'Italia. Well, he had to abandon after much of the team has been sick. He too, the team confirmed to us when we spoke to head DS Mark Reef at the start today that he had a fever, wasn't feeling good, and the team decided it was best to pull the plug on his 2024 Giro d'Italia participation. That means the team's down yet another man. They had five riders at the start of yesterday when Olaf Koy had to abandon. Now they're down to four riders. I spoke with Attila Walter, the Hungarian national champion in the red, white, and green jersey this morning. And he said, well, if anything, they're motivated by the win of Olaf Koy in stage nine in Naples. And now that Uta Brooks has abandoned with the white jersey on his shoulders that goes over to Antonio Tibiri from Lidl Trek, they're gonna be out to drop bombs on the Giro d'Italia, go for any and every stage win possible. We already saw that with Jan Tratnik in yesterday's summit finish. And we saw it again around four kilometers after the stage rolled out from kilometer zero. There on the attack, Eduardo Affini, joined soon after by Tim Van Dyke and then Thomas Champion of Kofidis. Those three riders were on the move for much of the day, 170 kilometers before the group would see them again. They were managing it well, two Vismas, one Kofidis rider, but it wasn't enough to hold off the hungry sprinters. 35 kilometers to go, they had pulled them in, then the action started to occur. Unfortunately, some crashes and fortunately a great sprint finish. So let's get to the crashes because 35 kilometers to go, they caught the three escapees and then around 20 kilometers to go, right before then we saw the attack of Andrea Piccolo from EF Education, Easy Post, the Italian. Nothing came of that. Soon after we saw the crash of Felix Groschartner and the crash with Kevin Vermarke who just tumbled right over him. Vermarke didn't seem that bad. He was able to jump up, get back going, ride on and push on for another day. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to help his sprinter today, Fabio Jakobsen, because he was pretty banged up. Wasn't able to help him as much as he would have liked to, I should say. Felix Groschotner, one of the key men for Tadej Pogacar, took a hit, took a tumble. When I saw the Austrian rider there at the finish line, I got some footage of him. He looked pretty scraped up, pretty dazed and confused. So let's hope for his sake and for the sake of Tadej Pogacar, who's here to race for the overall classification wearing that pink jersey since stage two. Let's hope for their sake that he's okay and able to push on. But it just shows you that anything and everything can happen in a three week stage race. And for those of you statisticians at home today, during the stage, we covered the halfway point in terms of kilometers of the total for this race. So we're only halfway there to the finish line that'll eventually be in Rome. Yeah, it goes up to the mountains in the north, but we jet back down to Rome for the stage 21. But we'll get to that later. We still have a week and a half of racing to get there. And we still have the sprint of today to talk about because the sprint teams 
They were working all day. We saw Lidl up there working for Jonathan Milan. We saw Jaco Alula working for Caleb Ewan. We saw Sudal Quickstep with American Luke Lamperti and they were working for Tim Merlier. All those teams were working strong all day. Then towards the final, we started to see the GC teams up front to protect their GC men. UA Team Emirates looking after Tade Pogacar, who frankly doesn't need much looking after. He's so strong these days. And Bora Hansgrohe looking after Danny Martinez, who holds the blue jersey of best mountains rider, holding it, I think, for Tade Pogacar. We're going to have to look at those numbers. But he's holding it, wearing it, because Tade is a pink. Then Garrett Thomas, the Ineos team, they're riding up at the front, surfing the front as well to keep Garrett out of trouble. Tade, however, also does a mean lead out. So we saw that big U-turn at 3.4 kilometers to go, ended at 3.4 kilometers to go, and that spit him out here along the coast for the final dead straight run into the finish that Jonathan Milan said, well, technically it was an easy run in with just around three kilometers to go, I think it was. I drove the finish. There was a little bit of a curve, but nothing more than that. Straight run in, no problemo, you would think. We were a little bit worried for Tade Pogacar. Afterwards, when I spoke with him there in the mix zone, he confirmed that he's feeling better. He's concerned about the sicknesses that are going around, the sniffles and the fever that was reported by Visma. Keanu to Brooks abandoning the race. He says he feels better, no problem there. But he did point out that he's having to be careful with these crashes. He said there's no safe place. Some say he shouldn't be up there at the front trying to do the lead outs, but some say that's the safest spot to ride if you can if you have the muscles and Tade was doing that also helping with the lead out of Sebastian Milano Rui Oliveira as well from UA Team Emirates they have those two guys here that can work for the sprint train when they're not helping out Tade on the flat stages they were all up there leading it out then you'll notice in the final kilometer there was this crash Madis Mikels from Intermarche Wanti the Estonian rider shot right very quickly he must have touched wheels with another rider went all the way over to the right, hit Fabio Jakobsen. Jakobsen came down, a nasty crash. Tade told us he just avoided that crash. So that shows the dangers that's up there when you're up in the sprint in the final kilometer. The sprinters kept pushing on. Jakobsen obviously wasn't involved in the sprint today. And we saw that charge of Jonathan Milan like a freight train. He's so massive, tall rider. And he explained in the mix zone afterwards, he, have to, he has to try to make himself as small as possible, as arrow as possible to get the advantage. They were sprinting into a headwind and that worked for his advantage. Remember, he was part of the team pursuit team for Team Italy at the 2020, well, the 2021 Olympics in Tokyo where they took home the gold medal. He has that strength, he has that power, he has that push. As too does Belgium, Tim Merlier. Both of those guys had won one stage so far in this year at Italia, head to head. Milan powered ahead. Tim Merlier got second place and in third place, Caden Groves. Well, we saw the results later rectified. When I was over there in the mix zone, the information came through over radio that Tim Merlier had been regulated back to 89th at the back of the bunch, back to 89th place for uh, irregular sprinting, not holding his line quite straight. We're seeing a lot of that lately, and I asked Jonathan Milan about if the jury is doing too much of that. He took the politically safe response saying, well, they're just trying to do the best they can and look after the riders and play it safe. But I think there are too many regulations these days in the sprints, and there's no way that they can say what's right and what's wrong all the time. And often they miss what is a dangerous sprinter, and often they pick out a sprinter that really wasn't that dangerous and they're coming down too hard on this lately but that's what they're doing and Tim Merlier lost his second place on the stage that meant the Caden Groves got second in the day with our winner Jonathan Milan adding more points to his Chiclamino collection in the points purple jersey let me know what you think was that a proper regulation or not it's a shame for Tim Merlier who also wants those points that would have come with second place as it is, Jonathan Milan celebrating and Team Lidl Trek really doing the work to pull it off. So well-deserved win for the Italian, for the team. And when we're talking about the cheers of the fans every day that we see here on the finish line, they're yelling for Poggy. We saw it today at the start, but they're also yelling for Jonathan Milan and also Filippo Ghana. Those are the big stars here at the 2024 Giro d'Italia. Unfortunately, we're without Kian Utebrooks. Looks like Kevin Vermark is going to be okay. He's going to push on. Question marks around Felix Groschartner, and we're going to keep an eye on Tadej Pogacar's health. 
What's ahead? Well, tomorrow, a lumpy, bumpy stage. Should be a sprint, could be an escape. Attila Walter, when we spoke with him today, he said tomorrow is a chance more for an escape. So we'll look out for that. Also spoke with Michael Valgren from EF Education, Easy Post this morning. He'll be looking for an escape tomorrow in those final kilometers. The next day, Cento, that's dead flat. I don't even think there's a categorized climb on the day. That's definitely going to be a sprinter stage. Then we got the time trial. Then we got that massive mountain stage on Sunday to Lavigno. A lot to look forward to, but tonight, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's drink some Prosecco, the Italian version of champagne here in the land of Arostacini, those little meat sticks that they have here in Abruzzo. And of course, the Trabocchi, the famous fishing huts that you see dotted along the coastline here in Abruzzo. A fabulous day out for Jonathan Milan. Little Trek doing the work to get him in to the finish for the sprint win at the stage 11 of the 2024 Giro d'Italia.